Right, so we have looked at numerical solutions for integration already that included the rectangle rule and the trapezium rule. Now the third type that you need to know about is Simpson's rule, which um, kind of moves on like trapezium did a better job than the rectangle rule um, does because you get slightly closer to the curve. Simpson rule does a little bit better again because it models the curve that we had trouble integrating with um, parabolas, basically. So it looks something like this. So we have some sort of function, and it'll be something a little bit odd because um, that's going to be the nature of the things that we can't integrate. And um, just like before, we might be wanting to find the area um, from one point to another point on the curve. So this area under the graph here, but we can't do it because we're not able to integrate that function, whatever it might be. So previously we've looked at splitting it up into sections and then um, making trapezia around it or doing a rectangle to estimate that. But instead, if we can model some parabolas on it, we might be able to do a better job. So say we were going to split this up into um, perhaps sections like this, so you could see the most basic of these parabolas that we've got here. We've, we've got a parabola that kind of goes like this and then a parabola that kind of goes like that, that would give us an, a good approximation for where that curve is sitting. Now, if you split that up and do it enough times over small enough um, sections of those intervals, then you'll get pretty close to modeling how that curve really is with your different parabolas that you're assigning to each of those sections like this. And then you use um, the Simpson rule, tidies all of that up to give you an an approximation for the area under the curve by working out each of those separate um, strips that we've got and adding them together. So this is what that looks like, which looks a little bit scary, but let's just break down what it's telling us. So first of all, H right here, that is just the width of your intervals. Um, let's bring up a little sketch. So say we were trying to do this area here, and we want to split it up into um, sections first of all. Now for Simpson's rule to work, you have to have an even number of um, columns. Um, so we can't split that into five of those strips, for example. We need even numbers. I'm going to keep it to four just to keep things fairly simple for now. Okay, so N is the number of strips that you've made. And then H is B minus A divided by N. So it's this distance, take away this distance here, so we get the distance between A and B, divide it by N, and that will give you the width of each of your strips. So this is H, H. In fact, I'll write it on the top here. We'll just zoom in a little bit for a second. So this here is H. So each of those strips is H wide. And in this case, N is four on this one because we've got four of those strips. Right, so H is the width, N is the number of strips. Now what are all these Y values in here that have, we've got going on? Let's just break those down. Right, so let's just zoom in a little bit here. So the y0 is the first y value. And the yn is the last one. So this up here, we have y0 is the length of this first left-hand side of that first strip. And yn is the length of this right-hand strip. Then you have in here all of the odd y values, and they get multiplied by 4. So in this case, we've got y0, y1, y2, y3, y4. So yn in this case is our y4, and this would be y1, y2, y3. So it's the height of each of the dividing lines for our strips. And when we do the odd ones, we add up all of the odd ones. So this takes us from the first odd to the last odd, add them up and times it by four. 
and then this one takes all of the even numbered ones. So the first even one and the last even one in between those two end strips, of course, um, and then multiply them by two. So these are the odds. And these are the evens. And you put it all together in this formula. So add up the evens, times it by two. Add up the odds, times it by four. Add on the last, add on the first, times it by a third of the height. Right, let's t take a look at this with a properly worked solution so you can see how this goes together. So we're going to find the area under this curve from x equals 0 um, and x equals 4 using 8 subintervals. So I'm going to start with a table of values um, where I can work out the x values and the y values for each of our um, n values. So those those n values are the, the points um, where we're starting and going up to for making those strips. So at the very start, when n is 0, we're starting with um, an x value of 0. So we start there at 0, we will finish with x equals 4. So our first thing to work out is what our x values have to go through to get from 0 to 4 in 8 steps. So that is our h. And remember that h is b minus a over n. So 4 minus 0 is 0 divided by n, which is 8. So 4 divided by 8 means we are going up in halves. So we will have over here in our table 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, and so on. Next, we work out our y values by putting them into the function. So if x is 0, and we do 0 times 0 plus 2, y will also be 0. Now, if we put in 0 0.5, times 0.5 plus 2, we get the answer of 1.25. Next is to put in a 1. 1 times 1 plus 2, so that's 1 times 3, that's going to be 3. And we carry on working out all of those y values. OK, now we're ready to apply the, the Simpson's rule. OK, so we've got the Simpson rule looks like this. So I've just abbreviated that some of the odds, some of the evens, and then put them into our Simpson's rule. So let's run through that. We've got a third multiplied by the height, which is 0 0.5 here. y0 zero is 0. yn is 24. Plus 4 times. Now we need to add up the y odds. So here are our odds. So we're adding up 1.25, 5.25, 11.25, 19.25. That gives us a total of 37, plus 2 times the evens. OK, so evens, we've got 2, 4, 6. We don't count the 8 and the 0 because they were counted as the first and the last term. So we've got 3, 8, and 15 to add together, which comes to 26. Now work that through a third times, you know, all of this. Work it out. And we get our final answer as 37.33 units squared.